All right, guys, if you didn't know already, you know, many of the biggest pro controller players in the pro scene, such as Lexi and, you know, Train H Amplify, you know, they use secret controller techniques to gain an edge on their opponents, essentially helping them to become the pro that they are today. But your crunch on me, where you watch your motivation guy? Yeah, that's right, I'm back. And today, you know, I just want to say, if you're a controller player who is just starting out and wants to advance to the next level, you know, that these pro players are on, get ready, put your seatbelts on, because this video, we're going to show you guys and we're going to take you through some of the best secret controller tips their pros are hiding in Fortnite Season 7. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> Let's get this going. So one of the well-known and unfortunate disadvantages of using a controller is that you simply don't have a lot of buttons to use compared to a keyboard player. Okay, so on a keyboard, I mean, you literally use every one of your fingers for at least two different in-game actions with many keys to choose from. But with a controller, you're limited to only a small amount of buttons for each finger, and some of your fingers aren't even used at all when using a controller. Okay, so if you think about it, man, like if you simply just use any controller the default way, you're going to have to take your thumb off of the right thumbstick to simply jump. That hugely sabotages smooth and consistent movements in game, so having a way around that can help you massively become a much better player. And this is why many pros do one of two things, all right? First, a lot of pros naturally play with the claw grip, you know, which allows them to hit the buttons on the front of the controller with their index fingers, allowing them to have more control of their movement while still being able to press those buttons. However, claw grip takes a lot of time to practice, like especially if you've already been using your controller casually for years before Fortnite, changing your muscle memory to account for this new technique after years of playing casually, it's gonna make it like 10 times harder to play with. It's definitely possible and you can do anything I'm telling you if you really work at it and commit yourself, believe that, um, but it's definitely a good technique to use if you don't wanna spend any money. That brings us to our second option, a customizable controller that will unfortunately cost us a little money. However, the benefits will be extremely noticeable that you know a little bit of the money that you invest into your pro career will 100% be worth it. These controllers have been in the gaming industry for a while and you know add an extra layer to your controller performance. And on top of giving you better grip and feel overall, they also add more buttons to the back of the controller, known as paddles, which you can then assign even more actions in game. For example, if you set one of these paddles to something like your jump bind, it means you're gonna never have to take your thumbs off the analog sticks while you're pressing the jump button, granting you a lot more control of your character and adds extra in-game movement mobility. So these paddles can even be used for easy access, double edit binds, you know, where you can just edit extra fast without even having to take your thumbs off of an analog stick, like making your piece control and edits in general 10 times faster and even smoother than they already are right now. Okay, so all in all guys, if you're just using controllers in their default state with no claw grip or paddles, you're unfortunately going to be putting yourself at a huge disadvantage when it comes to competitive Fortnite. Like if you don't believe me, okay, just go and look at which controller Lechi uses for his games, which is a fully customizable Astro C40 PS4 controller with rear buttons. Okay, so just imagine how much control that gives him as opposed to a regular just dual shot controller. Of course, all right, we're not saying that it's impossible to be a pro with a regular console controller, not saying that. And and spending so much money on a simple controller might seem to be a little bit over the top, but the harsh truth is that it's going to be a lot harder to excel in the pro industry without trying out some of these controller modifications, all right? If you're still not able to lock into your enemies, even though you thought that you had everything completely now, make sure to head on over to our website, proguides.com, where we've got an army of pro coaches ready and waiting to teach you everything that you need to know about Fortnite, so you can just improve really fast. Trigger discipline is a super underrated Fortnite skill that simply cannot be overlooked when looking to become a pro player, especially when using a controller. The pros are using this trick every single time they load into a Fortnite match. Check it out, like keyboard and mouse players can do 180 flick shot in less than a tenth of a second, but controller players, most of the time, can't flick the shot as easily or quickly, especially if playing on a medium to low sensitivity. This is why controller players must make their shot count and make it super precise, dealing the most amount of damage they can possibly get. And so a huge misconception within the Fortnite community is that controller players only do tons of damage close range because of their overpowered aim assist when that is just simply not the case. Yes, aim assist partly plays into it, but aim assist isn't what it used to be and has been nerfed a lot in the past. The main reason is that, you know, controller players naturally have good click timing and trigger discipline due to the fact, you know, controller players can't flick most of their shots. Controller players simply have to line up their shots and time the clicks right before, you know, every single close range gunfight, since it's pretty much impossible to flick shot on an analog stick without super high sense. 
So this is why it's so important to not only practice your aim and train your click timing consistently, but also to simply be aware that you don't have to shoot as soon as your crosshair is on the enemy. And so when pros are fighting during the end game, like they know that most of the gunfights only last a few seconds because of the constant pressure of rotation and the storm coming in. So just hitting a headshot is necessary to get the fight over and done with quickly. And so when you're in a close range shotgun fight, if it's possible guys, just wait until you can just deal a max damage shot to the head. You know, doing this will improve your trigger discipline and get your fights finished more efficiently. In addition, playing a custom map, Raider 464th Aim Duels, which changed my life, <laughs> and you can do this frequently, is another boost that can really just keep your aim sharp and really get you to really practice your close range trigger discipline, right? And so this map features tons of close range, you know, shotgun maps for you and another player to really practice your aim and also movement skills. Okay, so now, of course, we can't have a controller video without mentioning the age old debate of linear versus exponential. <laughs> this option can be found in your Fortnite settings on the controller options tab below advanced sensitivity, which is better. It all honestly comes down to preference. But first, it's important to understand the difference between linear and exponential. The difference between linear and exponential is pretty simple. The name refer to the input curves so if you're moving your analog stick on exponential it's initially going to move slower and then the more that you're pushing the thumbstick it's going to exponentially go faster ramping up on a curve right exponential allows you to have better more precise and smaller movements especially when you're shooting long range so while linear has a linear input curve, meaning the rate at which you turn is consistent with how much you push the thumbstick, no extremely precise movement, but consistent and easy to get used to. So there is never a correct choice when it comes to using linear input or exponential. However, many pros in the community, such as Lechi, say, you know, that switching over to exponential was the best decision they ever made. So maybe following their footsteps and trying out both settings is the way to go. Put your crust on me. Okay, it is time for the question of the day. So let's bring up the old class debate once again okay do you guys use exponential or linear okay both have their own pros and their own cons but which one makes you feel like a legend on the sticks let us know in the comments down below and we're definitely going to check it out all right guys back to the video all right so one more thing that you guys got to practice to make your controller edits efficient and smooth is your crosshair placement so the reason why crosshair placement during editing is so important is that if you have a good crosshair placement you're going to be able to edit a lot faster and more consistently making your piece control against enemies a lot more successful if you think about it man like when editing you only need to go across the very edge of the blue tiles to activate them so instead of just making huge thumbstick movements to get your edits done you can actually make pretty small movements to achieve the exact same thing except it's going to be a lot faster so one way to practice your crosshair placements while editing is to load into a creative lobby and play xan x60's crosshair placement piece control and aim map but mainly focus on the crosshair placement section all right this map is really good for practicing your crosshair placement on all the different types of builds and edits and will put you in top tier condition for those pro mid game peace control battles all right guys so those were what we think are the most important secret controller tips that you need to know to succeed in fortnite this season so if you found yourself you know lagging behind the mouse and keyboard competition this season then hopefully all the tips and tricks that we've gone over today you know it's definitely going to help you get back on track if you guys liked the video make sure you sub to the channel and connect with me on my instagram at your motivation guy i really do believe in you i'm gonna say it each and every day that i am your number one fan so keep going never quit i'll see you in the next one Peace.